Let me explain uh, relativistic kinetic energy here for you. These are the formulas that the data packet gives you. Uh, I think you're better off not using them. My favorite formula to use, because this is actually a pretty simple concept, is just use E equals mc squared. Let me, let me just explain this, okay? Let's suppose you have a one kilogram mass, okay? If you speed it up to about 0.42 the speed of light, it'll have a mass of 1.1 kilogram. It will have gained 0.1 kilogram. But where did that mass come from? Well, the answer is the mass came from energy, right? So how much energy does it have? Well, it's got 0.1 kilogram of energy times the speed of light squared, right? Right, I'm just using E equals mc squared. So really the formula that I use is that the kinetic energy is the change in mass, the, di the amount that it changes, right, times c squared. That's the real formula that we use, right? It's the change in mass due to the dilation, due to the fact that it's speeding up times c squared. That's your kinetic energy, okay? Um, but let me just explain what these formulas are here, okay? This thing here is the rest energy. That's if you could convert the, um, the mass of the object into pure energy. Of course, that's E equals mc squared, right? This is the moving energy of the object. There's probably a better word for it, but that's all I'm coming up with. That's the energy, the total energy of matter and kinetic energy, right? So that's rest energy plus kinetic energy, right? Right there. And all that, all this is, by the way, this is the dilated mass times c squared, right? And then this guy here, this is the formula for the kinetic energy that I, that I almost never use because these problems are so much more simple than this. Now, let me just write out what this really is, and you'll recognize immediately what they've done. This looks, you know, it's all highly complicated, right? But this thing here, I'm just going to, I'm going to go m naught over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared, okay, minus m naught times c squared. Well, g, all this is, this is the dilated mass right here minus the rest mass. Isn't this just the change in mass? The amount it changes because it's going fast, right? So the kinetic energy is just the change in mass. I tend not to use this formula because I just understand this. Okay, let, let me just let, let me do some examples. I'll do three examples, and I think you'll understand it as well as I do. Okay, um, a 10 kilogram object going 0.6 the speed of light. Right. Well, let me find um, its new mass. Okay, so find the dilated mass. Okay, and that's going to be uh, 10 divided by the square root of 1 minus. Um, 0.6 squared, okay? So 10 divided by the square root of 1 minus 0.6 squared. Uh, and that's 12.5, exactly, that's crazy. Now the question is, what's the kinetic energy? Well, this is the rest mass, this is the moving mass. How much mass of energy do we have? Well, the answer is, 2.5 kilograms of energy, yes, yes, oh, there we go, right, okay, and now I'm just going to say E equals mc squared, so I'm going to say it's the change in mass times c squared, right, so it's 2.5 times 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second squared, and that's kilograms, right, and of course a kilogram meter squared per second squared is a joule, right, okay, so this is 2.5 times 3e8 squared, and that's 2.25 times 10 to the 17th joules, right? So find the dilated mass, subtract the rest mass, that's how much your mass has changed, multiply by c squared. Simple as anything, right? Okay. Okay, so now the question is what's what is its mass, what's its velocity? Okay. Now to be sure, we could plug it into that highly complicated formula, right? That the kinetic energy is, uh, uh, you know, that Lorentz factor minus 1 times m naught c squared. And then we could expand this to be m naught over square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared minus 1 minus m naught and c squared. And my gosh, my goodness, whoopsie daisy. Can you imagine solving that for uh, V? Let's not do that, okay? 
I'm pretty down to earth with this thing. Let's find out the mass of this. Find the mass of that. We're going to find the mass of that. So let's see. E equals mc squared. So m is e over c squared, right? So I'm going to find this is going to be the change in mass. That's how much more the baseball is going to weigh. It's going to weigh this much more, right? So I'm going to turn that into, into mass. So 2e15 divided by 3e8 squared, right? That's the speed of light, right? So 2e15 divided by 3e8 squared. And the answer is 0 0.0, and then a lot of twos. There's so many twos, two, 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 et cetera, right? Okay. Uh, and that's kilograms, right? So my new mass, it already had this much mass. We just gave it this much energy. It's going to have that much more, right? So I'm going to go 1.4, oh, whoops. I'm going to go uh, 0 0.144 plus that, right? Okay. So plus 0.144. And I get the new mass. The new mass is, is 0.1662 and then two repeats, right? Kilograms. Okay. I'm going to store that in A. Okay, so now if you recall, we want to find the velocity. Do you remember that all velocities are the speed of light times the square root of 1 minus small squared over big squared. Do you remember that? You'll do well to remember that. You'll do well in this life, right? Okay, so I'm going to go c times the square root of 1 minus, and then small must be the original mass of the baseball. Squared. Don't forget to square it. 0 0.1662 repeating squared. Okay, so I'm going to go square root, left parenthesis, 1 minus 0.144 squared divided by alpha a squared, because I stored mine in a. I don't have to type all those twos in. Okay, and I get c is equal to 0.4995, whoops, v is equal to, sorry, v is equal to 0.4995c, okay, which is about 0.50c. So, what you do in this thing, right, is if they give you the kinetic energy and the mass, figure out how the, the mass of the energy, right, so that's what I did here. I found the mass of the energy. I added that to the rest mass because that's how much more it's going to, that's the, how much more the mass is going to be, right? It's going to be more by that amount of mass, right? And then now you've got two masses. You've got the undilated mass and you've got the dilated mass. This thing here is the dilated mass. Okay, and then if you know both of those, it's a simple thing to find the velocity. Okay, okay, this looks terribly difficult, right? Uh, if you really want to inflict pain on yourself, you know, convert MeV, a million electron volts, which is what that is, right? Because it's an electron. Turn that into joules. Then use that, that horrible formula that they give you, okay? Let me suggest a better way. This is the rest mass of an electron. Notice that it's in energy units, yes? That means if you take an electron and turn it into pure energy, that's how many million electron volts of energy it's going to have. Guess what its new total energy is? This is the rest energy. Guess what the moving energy is going to be? Did you guess that it's going to be... Did you guess that we can just add those up? No, well, you guessed right. So that is, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can do this. 0.666 MeV, right? So this is the mass of the electron at rest. This is the mass of the electron moving, right? And I know this sounds exotic, that object's mass changes when it moves, but this is definitely not pi in the sky. This is well confirmed. We, we know this because we put these through magnetic fields and they, they, they take a wider arc than they should. And we know that they've got more mass. Okay, okay. so now we've got the moving mass. This is, by the way, the dilated mass. Okay, so now the velocity is the speed of light times the square root of 1 minus small squared over big squared, right? So 1 minus 
0.511 squared divided by 0.666 squared. <laughs> Sorry. All right. <laughs> 1 minus 0.511 squared divided by 0.666 squared. All right. I don't have the answer to this. I hope I got it right. Okay, so it is 0 0.641, the speed of light. Yay! Let me double check my math here. Did I do that right? I'm not secure with this. I think I did. Yay! Okay, I'm going to do some other examples. Those, are, those will be in the um, example problems. Uh, but you're probably good to go if you know this, if this makes sense.